And this morning, as we begin worshiping, just kind of put on your heart the word devotion. What does devotion mean? What does it mean to be devoted to God? What does it mean to totally commit, to totally give over our own wants, our own things, to live for a king who died for us? I mean, what does that really look like?
that you are here in all your beauty and all your majesty this morning. God, we fix our gaze on you. We fix our gaze on you, Lord. Look how beautiful our King is. Look how beautiful our King is in all of his holiness. Father, we give you the depths of our heart this morning, God. The depths of our heart belong to you, God. We hold nothing back to you today, Jesus. We hold nothing back. Holy Spirit, come, Father, have your way. Jesus, be glorified in this place today. Why you are 
famous bow and shut the mouths of the lions and bring troubles to life and do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Make way through the waters, make me through the fire, do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Shut the mouths of the lions bring trouble. Famous for why you are famous for. No way, and I believe I 
the world but it couldn't feel me and man's empty praise the treasures of fame were never enough and then you came along and you put me back together and every is now satisfied here in your love. And oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley, and there's not a place for mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's
anybody in here have a... Now, y'all, don't y'all stop. <laughs> anybody in here feel like there's bones or feel like there's a sea? Or feel like the, you need the Lord to transform something inside of you today? Maybe it's a financial situation. Maybe it's a marriage. Maybe it's a relationship. And God's wanting to change that for you. Father, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus. Would you just begin to just speak to the Father? He already knows. He already knows what it is. Father, we just submit everything that seems dead, everything that seems impossible, everything that seems like it couldn't work out, Father, we submit it to you. Father, I just see the Israelites as they're at the Red Sea and they thought, shoot, it's over. You parted the Red Sea, God. And you can part whatever we need, Father. You can do whatever we are asking of you, God. You said, if you ask anything in my name, you shall have it. And I feel like we have not tapped into that. We have yet to tap into that. We have yet to acknowledge that supernatural part of one of his promises. sing a spiritual song? Hey, can you just begin to sing out in your seat? you got to dig a little deeper, a little deeper to where you've never dug before. You've got to reach the place where your faith has not gone before. Yeah. Sometimes it starts with the movement of your tongue by speaking out. We believe for the impossible right now. And I see you waters begin to part. And I see you waters beginning to part. And I see you waters beginning to part in the name of Jesus. Just release it.
I'm seated with Christ. I'm seated with Christ. perspectives begin to change the impossible begins to seem possible and all the thoughts that Christ has begin to just flood who we are and all the love that he has for us begin to just roll over us wave after wave after wave after wave when we begin to get that into our spirits that I'm here but I'm seated with Christ it's a mystery of God that he has for us favor and be vulnerable with me for a moment. Um, if you have a sickness or a pain or anything that's happening physically in your body that doesn't line up with the Word of God, would you come up to the front so that we can pray for you? 
It doesn't matter what it is. Knee, arm, elbow, eye. Yes, Jesus. There's healing in the room. Father, in Jesus' name right now, God, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your authority. We thank you for your blood. God, Isaiah 53 says you poured out your soul for us, for our weaknesses, for our grief, for our healing. So, Father, right now, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, God, we just ask for power to manifest on each body that needs it, God that you would grant gifts of healing to each person who needs it, God, including that drummer. Lord, that you would heal his knee. Father, that you would heal bodies in this moment right now. And with bodies, Lord, we ask that you would touch minds and touch hearts. God, traumas and pains and regrets and guilt and shame. Lord, bring fire to those things. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would heal now. Jesus name.
God to please him in this room. And he said, if you allow my fire to come kindle upon your heart, I'll purify you. It is a time of repentance right now. If there's anything in your heart holding you back, the Father says that the fire fall on you right now. He wants to baptize you in fire, but it starts with repentance. fire come and baptize you right now.
that you feel like you just definitely need prayer for that you don't want to miss this moment if you'll just lift your hand we'll arrange that for you if anybody need, has a need you don't want to miss this moment got two over here okay when she gets her senses we'll have her come <laughs> have a need but you don't want to leave without partnering with somebody agreeing on earth to see heaven is here right now we actually brought it in with us but we have a heaven awareness right now or two, what David actually called me to come up here for <laughs> was to have you guys hop online and go to our Facebook page. And would you just begin to say a shout out to those that are on watching online? If you'll just do that when you feel like the timing is right, we just want to make the uh, our home family, <laughs> people that are home right now and not able to come. For multiple reasons. me 
see you anybody happy about that you see the real me you see the real me you see the real me and you love me if you have a hard time receiving that would you just lift your hands right now the Lord's just about to solidify and that's some people Oh, you see the real me, you see the real me, you see the real me, and you love me. You see the real me, you see the real me, you see the real me, and you love me. You love me. You see the real me. You see the real me. You see the real me and you love me. Do you have something to share? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you love me. Thank you, Jesus. Does anybody feel like you've heard anything from the Lord and need to share? I'm going to give you an opportunity kind of while we're still ministering over here a few minutes. just let this keep going no rush here uh yeah to all you guys who are at home and on the road we miss you we love you how you doing hope you're having a wonderful sunday god is just so good in this place he's so good his presence is so strong it's just like that thank you jesus you know one thing we do want to be known for is a place where the presence of jesus is and he is here. Oh, man. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. You're so good. You're so good. Man, so many good things. So many good things. Let's just be comfortable in this. Let's just be comfortable in it. And... Uh, as they continue ministering, uh, Nathan, can you come here for a minute? Paul, can, can I borrow you for a minute? Can you guys give these out? Maybe one per family. I'll let you, maybe you guys choose whichever sides you need to do there. Thank you, good sir. If Nathan, you'll take that side. Go ahead, Brother Mike. Hallelujah. Uh, while, while you guys were ministering, uh, when the second song, I was standing back there just meditating on the Lord, and it was, it was like the Holy Spirit was saying, the Lord was saying, what would you have me to do? And by that, I was receiving from him, it's time to speak. You know, it's time to say a thing. It's time to declare a thing. It starts with a word. It starts with a voice. You know, the Lord can't do anything in the earth until somebody speaks. He couldn't even come into the earth until the angel came and spoke to Mary. John the Baptist couldn't come forth. Matter of fact, he, he had, the angel had to shut Zechariah's mouth because he, would say the, he was going to say the wrong thing. So it's important in how we talk and how we speak because the Word of God says that we walk by faith and not by sight. To say things... Well, Romans 4 says that speak things that aren't as though they are. It's, it's, that, it's that word of God that you know in your heart because Tyler, when he brought it up, you know, it says if it doesn't line up with God's word, it's false. Balaam and Balak, they were going to curse Israel. God wouldn't let them, so he actually prophesied. It, it, starts, it starts with a voice or with a word. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, 
and he'll add all things to you. In Colossians in 3, it says, If you be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. The Lord's Prayer says, Thy kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. How does that get here? It gets here by somebody speaking. Morgan is a big advocate about prophecy or, or prophesying. You, you have to prophesy into your own life, into your children's life, into your jobs, into this realm that you live in to bring God's glory God's peace and God's rest in, into our life, regardless of the circumstances, because a lot of times, and, and I'm guilty of it, we speak circumstances that don't line up to God's Word, and we get the end results of those circumstances. Regardless of the outcome of the circumstance, it's important that you and I stick with God, stay in faith, and speak God's Word over your stuff, over yourself, over over purpose. Well, it says in Psalms 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, and forget not His benefits. Do, you know his benef do we know His benefits enough that we can speak those when circumstances aren't lining up with benefits? To speak. Mm -hmm. To say a thing. And then allow your actions to Follow through with what you're saying. Stay in faith. And I say that because all of us have struggles and have battles that we go through. The last word should be God's word. God says, I am the first and the last. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If we could just get a hold of that sometimes, you know, our misery wouldn't be so difficult. <laughs> It wouldn't be such a miserable place. But, you know, we could stand in the glory of God and just say, God, your word was sent. It says, it says that his word, it's in uh, uh, Exodus 23, and I think verse 20, 25, he says that, that he came, his word came. He says that he would bless your bread and your water and heal all of your diseases. And he said all of that, and Jesus hadn't even died yet. How much more is it that we have through the death of Christ, through Messiah, who has given us, the Bible says he has given us all things. Isn't that wonderful? That regardless of what we go through, Jesus is saying, what would you have me to do? He's looking for somebody to speak or to say a thing. Remember the centurion. He came speaking, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He says, oh man, you got great faith. The Syphonician woman, she came speaking, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Even the crumbs from the table was enough, she said. What great faith. But to get in, involved with your circumstances, to hook up with your circumstances, Jesus says, oh ye of little faith. See. I want to encourage you. Allow this year to allow this year to be a year where you speak. Where we speak. What do we want Jesus to do in our church today? What do we want him to do before we even come to church? To reveal himself, to glorify his name, to bless those that are around us. What would you have Jesus to do? Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Hmm. Let me grab just a moment here. Isn't His presence good? You know, we think we know what we want and what we need, but really God always directs that, corrects that. And so we're just so thankful for Your presence, God. We're so thankful for You being with us. Lord, we thank You that You love us so much that You actually came from heaven to earth for us. And so, Lord, we just praise You and we glorify You. We make You bigger 
in every circumstance. We bless your name, Heavenly Father. We worship you so, so humbly. We thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to change gears real big compared to what I had prepared. Um, I'll talk in depth the next week about the vision of the church, but let me just introduce to you on this page at the very bottom. Uh, it says the 2021 theme. Our theme this year is devotion. Tyler, uh, sermon hacking at the beginning said, I, I just challenge you to think about devotion. I appreciate that. That was a very good plug. I appreciate that. At first, when I was asking the Lord, just what's the theme for this year? I thought it was going to be something different, but just this week as I was actually typing out the theme, it, it was not that which I had thought. The Lord wants us to focus on devotion this year. There's three areas we want to be devoted in. The first one is we want to be devoted with our time. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to start having church Monday through Saturday, okay? But what that means is when it comes to a theme with the Lord, let's devote more of our personal time to Him. And also, as a church, let's devote more of our focus in our, in our time. When we start, you know, when, when we feel the peace about introducing the small groups, introducing outreaches, introducing these miscellaneous gatherings, let's, let's increase our devotion, First to the Lord always, and then to each other, and then to the church here. We want to be devoted with our excellence. Again, I'll unpack this again deeper next week, but our excellence has to go to a new level. Let me give you this illustration. If you invited some guests over to have lunch with you, would you half cook the chicken? No. Would you put milk in the baked beans and stir it up to make it creamier? <laughs> no, you wouldn't. That's an inside joke. I've done that before by accident. Never try that. And I mean that. Never tried. It was terrible. Morgan was so generous in her uh, correction. So we want to be devoted with our time. We want to be devoted with our, our, our excellence. The second way we want to be devoted this year is through our resources. There are human resources. And there are other resources. You know, when I say resources, most people automatically think, he's wanting more money. Psh, duh. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The first area we needed to be devoted in is our time, T-I-M-E. I've always uh, heard it, well, I haven't always, but I've heard it said that the way you, you tell somebody you love them is through your time and money. <laughs> we want to be devoted with our time, again, when it comes to being devoted with the Lord in our time. You know, we heard a powerful prophetic word out of a different church last night, and it said the Lord has a word for His people. You need to uncover your secret place. Get back into your time with God and hear His voice. The second thing we do need to be devoted with is our resources, our money, uh, our if we have a work day. Let's, let's come together. Um, God, again, isn't so interested in your money as He is your heart. But when He has your heart, it's easier to trust Him with your money. Okay? Um, yeah, let's stick with that one. I have a few goals I'll introduce to you next week in depth about um, two new local organizations we're going to start supporting. Now, I say that in faith because, you know, COVID has caused our finances to, to be tight. We, we've had to invest, I don't know if you know this, but $20,000 plus over the past year into new AC units. But you know what? It was there. Praise God. So we are wanting to start increasing our financial giving out of the walls of the church as well. You know, in, in a normal church, we'd call that missions, okay? The other thing the Lord wants us to be devoted to is with our heart. If we can't do it with our heart, then we're just, we're just faking it. You know, and God doesn't want that. God wants our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength. How are we going to be devoted with our heart? This year, we really want to focus on two things, evangelism and discipleship. The two are like this streamlined process of a work in process. You know, when you think of like a, a factory or if you're going to make a widget, let's use the good old business school word widget. If you want to make a widget, well, then you have to have the actual beginning and then you got to have the, the maturation of that. So if you have like 
a widget that has part A, well, part A and part B need to work together to create the output. In the church world, we've been given a mandate to go into all the world to what? Preach the good news to the poor. But also, it doesn't stop there. We need to have a discipling of the poor in spirit or the new believers. Um, we want to be more than just a salvation station. We want to be a dis discipleship. I need to create a rhyming word because that was really good. Uh, we need to be a, 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 a salvation station and a, de a development in our believer. We need to grow each other. We need to grow deep. And then um, with that being said, um, okay, you ready for this? I'm about to drop the ball on you. I'm, I'm done. Seriously, I had like a very long message, but I think the Lord has spoken today in our time together, Brother Mike's word. We have to speak, speak, speak by faith into the atmosphere. What is your 2021 going to be like this year? You need to start dreaming with God and you need to start speaking it. Let's, as a church, I'm speaking devotion. All of our devotion to God and to each other, our devotion of our time, our resources, and our heart. We have to, have to, have to be all in in this thing. And when we do that, it's going to be so much fun. God's going to be so good. Yeah, we'll do one. We'll, let me do one announcement, and then I'm going to ask one of our elders to come up and uh, take up our tithe and offering. Um, nah, you do it, Morgan. Come here. Bring your microphone. So one of the things that she gets her microphone that we're going to do is... Um, Every fifth Sunday, starting in January, we're going to introduce a Friends and Family Sunday. This is in, in a strategic way to bring your friends that you've been wanting to and incentivize them. Here's what I mean. Okay, y'all remember like maybe four Sundays ago, David was talking about the parable where... Um, the master was inviting everybody to his house, and he had sent out all these invitations to the well-to-do people, and they didn't want to come because they was busy. I know the parable anyways, even if you weren't here about. So <clears throat> then the master tells his servants, or well, the servants come in like, hey, no one's coming. And he's like, go to the highways and the byways. And then ultimately he says, compel them to come. Well, the way that Dave, and I was actually home. It was one of our, cor not, um, from home services, I guess. David had actually gave the version that said, make them come. And when I heard that, it was like, whoosh, like an arrow right to my heart. And I just started crying. I said, God, how do we make them come? How do I make them? This, this people didn't even want to go to the king's or the master's house for a good dinner. Like you would have not even had to beg me to come to that. Right? So I, I began to ask him, and the first idea we had, a, a, it was it's a bit basically the same along the line, uh, the idea of this. And I called my good old friend Sally Jo the other day because I was like, hey, I got this idea. It's kind of crazy. What do you think? She's like the marketing queen. If you need something promoted, <laughs> get her on your side. <laughs> All right, listen. If you were out in the community and your friend that you trust Maybe not a complete stranger, although you can invite complete strangers. If you were wanting to invite someone to, uh, to your church or you were waiting to be invited, would you possibly come if they said you might could win a Keurig or an Instapot or something like that? You have absolutely nothing to lose, right? So what I have an idea was kind of crazy, but I'm thinking that we print out tickets that are the, the two, the copy tickets where we have a copy here and we give each of us a few tickets and we actually purchase gifts, line them all across the stage, and every person that you make come, you compel come, will every single one one will receive a gift like maybe like a Keurig, an Instapot, a Yeti cup. We're working on the details. So, yes. So. But look, let me tell you, okay, I had this friend in um, medical school, Islamic friend, and we had this thing called Friend Day one time at church. I'm like, how clever. And instead of saying, hey, you need Jesus, would you come to church with me, please? I said, we're having Friend Day at church. It would bless me so much if you would come to me. And you know she came? A practicing Islam. A practicing Muslim came to church with me. 
And I, she didn't get saved that day, but listen, she heard the gospel because that whole Sunday was about the gospel. So what if you can say, now, I have this ticket, and you tell them what's going on. It's Sunday, friend day, or what we call it? Sunday, that? fun day. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. We and you it's said, friends now, and family Sunday. this ticket, this is an automatic winning ticket. Like, you're going to win anything from, like, an Instapot to a Keurig to whatever. Whatever cool things we can get. Because the Lord's going to supply all those. Because when I heard him say, make them come, I said, oh, I got free game. Everything's free game right now. Right? Because he said, make them come. So anyways, on the fifth Sunday, there's, which Sundays had a five Sundays in this year? There's I think about it four was, of them, I There think. was January, May, either September, October, and then another one, the four or five in the year. And we could do it other times too, but at least for that goal that we can raise up enough prizes, kind of knowing how many tickets we're going to give out, mm-hmm. and you have to make them come. Anybody sound like that's fun? Would you go to a church if someone invited you like that? I could win a Keurig. Like, I'm going to win something no matter what. I have absolutely nothing to lose. I mean, so someone has to go shopping with me and Sally Joe at all these bargain bins, and we got to find all these good gifts. So that's cool. Do we find out the dates? Uh, No, but it starts on January 31st. Thank you, babe. So just two things. this leads me to say this. You may think, well, where's that in the Bible? You know, is that just bribing people to come or whatever? Well, here, here we're, we're taking the liberty. It says make them come. So uh, I love what Pastor Chris Hodges says. We'll do anything short of sin to cause somebody to come to know Christ. I love that statement. But in the Bible, doesn't it say it's the kindness of the Lord that draws men to repentance? Let's be kind to our community. We're not... We're not bribing people to come okay yeah we are so what the goal that's that's what i was saying the goal don't be inviting some friend from a different church to come i mean yeah you can always invite them but go after the lost when we do this we're speaking the language of the lost the lost does not speak christianese the lost does not speak hello brother how are you today Bless Holly Favored, and God's with me. Nothing wrong with that language. I'd, I'd love to pick on Mike Denny, but they had to leave a few minutes ago. Uh, nothing wrong with that language, but they don't speak that language. Just say, hey, we're having a drawing. We're having a giveaway at Friends and Family Day. Would you come with me? Yeah, you're going to win. Yeah. So anyways, that is going to be one of our ways to begin this evangelism process, and we're going to pair it, partner it with a discipleship program which Brother Reverend Tyler the Frickin' Frick and I are working on. I'm hoping to launch that in late February. That'll be everybody. And, and, and again, I'll speak more detail to this next week, but um, let me just give you some highlights. Another thing, as you leave today, I've got a uh, February and January and February calendar of events. We've got a lot going on. Let me just highlight them quickly. January 6th, this Wednesday night, we're going to have our prayer together. I invite you to come if you can. A corporate prayer, 630. January 6 through 12, I'm calling the church to a fast. Fast something. That doesn't mean eat fast food every day, all right? That's an old bad church pastor joke. Okay. So anyways, January 10th, the, the sec. You know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to stop. January 10th, I'm going to introduce Mission Sunday. I'll talk about that next week. Um, there's other, a few things, but the highlights, January 31st, Friends, Family, Sunday, February 3rd, um, is a typo. I made a mistake. We need to delete that. I'm going to give these to you next week. How about that? That's a big, bad mistake. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. February 3rd's right. I'll tell you more later. The other thing, and I'm done, I promise, maybe, the January 31st is Friends and Family Sunday. Our goal is to get people in hearing the message of the Lord, but bringing them back the next Sunday for a very special guest, Dr. Luke Coulter. You probably don't know his name, but please trust me when I say it's a big deal that he's coming. He's got such a strong gift in the prophetic and evangelism. He's a good teacher, and he's just fun to watch. So if you get a chance, go on Facebook. Dr. Luke Coulter will be here on that February 7th. So our goal is on January 1st. I mean, this is just perfect timing you know the goal is january 31st your lost friend gets saved the next week 
they just get totally encountered uh, with God's prophetic message for the church. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Again, next week, we're going to do uh, Vision Sunday Part 2. Yay! We'll get to the Joseph you know, winning while losing saga back uh, in a few weeks. But for now, here's what I want to ask. If Kenneth and Renee, also known as mom and dad, whoever's going to speak, um, they're going to uh, take our tithe and offering. Um, on Sundays, um, except for just the special days, um, we're going to have our elders come and take just a few moments, teach us on the tithe and offering. And um, for one thing, it'll just kind of get them back in front of your faces so you'll know who it is. So uh, come on up, whoever's taking up that tithe and offering today. I'm going to unmute 18. <laughs> and uh, so sorry, but I will have these in the back. I'll hand them to you. So just feel free to dismiss us. And thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, what I wanted to say, I wanted to go along with Mike Dandy, something he said before we start on the offering, if that's okay. Uh, <clears throat> I have to bring out my Mark eleven twenty two 22 here. Uh, Jesus had just spoke to the fig tree and cursed it. Now, how did he curse it? He spoke to it, speaking. And then he goes on to say <clears throat> to the disciples, they, Peter asked him, said, look, it's already dried up. And Jesus said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. That is so big. <laughs> and then he goes on to say that... Uh, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things that he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever things he saith. If you notice in that scripture, he said say three times. Three times he's emphasizing saying, to say, to speak. And then he goes on to say that for, whosoever, for whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you... Believe that you receive it and you shall have it. Again, he's speaking through prayer. But speaking ain't necessarily prayer, but prayer can be speaking or speaking can be prayer, as long as we're talking to God. And, and I just wanted, that was on my heart to say that, that, that uh, speaking is so important. God created the world. He created everything that was created. He spoke it into existence. So he gave us that same spirit, the Holy Spirit that is within us is the Holy Spirit that created the heavens and the earth and, and all creatures. And, and he gave us that same ability to speak creative, to have creative power to speak. But we have to have faith in God for this to work. And, and another uh, side reference where it said have faith in God is have the God kind of faith or have the faith of God. That's it's really awesome and that's what i wanted to say and renee here you do the offering <laughs> it is so important to know to speak say what god once said to to hear his holy spirit speak to us and then us cause it to come about by speaking it into the earth and, you know, I, I want to speak something real quick. And that's about how we give. And I'm going to try to make it as short as I can. <clears throat> but we give in many ways. Now, in the church, we all know we give tithes and offerings. We also give alms. But in giving, do you know that you are activating a principle of God? Anytime we give, with faith in what we're giving, we are activating a principle of God. Now, how many of you are aware of or have done this and paid it forward? You know that saying that everybody says, oh, let's pay it forward. Let's pay it forward. Well, to pay something forward means to respond to someone's kindness to us by being kind or paying it forward to someone else. Like when you go through the drive through line at McDonald's and you tell the cashier, hey, I want to pay for the car behind me, not knowing how much it's going to be. You know, you, you ever had those, 
What if they ordered for a whole football team? You know, moments, <laughs> that's okay. God would provide and he wouldn't tell you to pay it forward if you couldn't pay it forward. But when I think of the term pay it forward, I think of First John 4, 19, because the very first one to pay it forward was God our Father. And 4, 19 in First John says, we love him because he first loved us. He loved us first. And he paid it forward through his son, who paid it forward to us, who pays it forward to those around us. And we're talking about the love of God here. But do you know that if we are to fulfill the mission of Life Chapel, does anybody know what that is? That is bringing God's love to life, to our everyday lives. Now, one of the things I have been so blessed with, because I am the secretary here and I take care of the books, is that all of you guys online who haven't been able to be with us have been so faithful to give this whole year, so faithful. I get offerings online. I get offerings in the mail. I get people who call me and say, are you there? I'm going to do a drive-by and hand you my offering out the window. It is amazing at the faithfulness because I think we have an understanding of God's principle here. Tithing and offering is like paying it forward when we give our tithe. When we first learned about tithing many, many years ago, we jumped on it because at the time my husband was laid off for over a year, it would be work a week or two and then off a month or two and all of these things. And we had to totally depend on what God was doing. And in that dependence, we were taught about tithing. It's like a pay it forward principle. If we tithe, then we are paying forward into the kingdom of God and there will always be reaping when we give always. You know, I'm going to just cut short my whole thing here and go down to Luke 6, 38, where it says, give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. We use that scripture a lot, but we need to really, really think about what it's saying. Give. Give fulfills God's principles in his kingdom. Give love. Give help. Give faith. Give of your money, tithes and offerings. Because it says, and when you give, it shall be given to you. It doesn't say maybe you'll get it back. But it says good measure. And the word good there means beautiful measure, a valuable measure, a virtuous measure, a better measure than what you gave. That's all in giving. God promises us that what we get back will be even better. And then that last line, for with the same measure that you meet or the same measure that you give is going to be given back to you. Well, I've seen some bad attitudes sometimes when people (laughs) give. And I'm like, ooh, you don't need to do that. Don't need to do that. You'll activate the wrong principle there. But I think, too, if we read in depth about it, it's saying, for with the same measure of the heart. What is the heart attitude here in your giving? Are you giving just to get back? Then that's all you'll get back. But if you're giving out of God's principle of giving out of the heart, then we get that better, more valuable, more virtuous return. So there, there are so many things that we could learn from tithe and offering. So many testimonies. We could, we could fill your book full of testimonies of God's goodness to us. Now, did we always get it right? Nah, we have attitudes sometimes too. But when the heart believes and the mouth speaks what is believed, the tithe and the offering becomes a very valuable and precious 
not just commodity in our lives, but principle of the kingdom in our lives. So if you have your gift ready, um, if you will stand with me. And uh, Brother Grady, you have that ready? Yes, Brother Grady will be in the back. And we're going to pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you so very much that your word is so full, so full, Lord. And it gives us answers to what we need, not just financially, but in every arena of life. And Lord, I thank you for those who have been so faithful, Lord, this body has been so faithful, God, to give during this past year. And Lord, I know it would have been easy to have given up, but instead they give in to your kingdom. I ask your blessings upon those who give in, Lord, and we pray that your grace and your mercy abound in the return. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, we love you guys. We are excited to see so many of you here today. And hope to see you next Sunday. Amen. You are dismissed.